Hey, hey, we're saints. Good morning. God bless and keep all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. You know, baptisms for a priest is a, can be a tentative thing. I mean, you're holding someone else's child in your hands. And I'm going to tell you the story of my first baptism. I was a, a, a new priest. I mean, literally like not even a month old in the priesthood. And I was an assistant in Oklahoma City, and there was a child to be baptized. Her name was Mary. I'll never forget this child in all my life. And as we're doing the service, uh, the, the pastor, Father Constantine, he wanted to bring the, you know, the green guy in and let him get started. So I'm standing there. I have no idea. And he says, Father <laughs> Chris, you baptize the little baby. I'm like, okay, so I'll go baptize the baby. And, I, you know, I was nervous as I thought about it because, like I said, having never done it, one. Number two, I mean, it's a child, it's a life, and you're going to smother them under the water, right? Like, the, all these things are happening in my head, and, and I'm totally nervous. I said, okay, whatever you do, go slow. Take your time. Don't drop this child. So I take the child, Mary, and she's facing away from me, and I said, the child of God, Mary, is baptized in the name of the Father. And as I lifted her up slowly, forgive me if it's crass, the child passed the loudest gas I've ever heard in my life. And I thought like, well, that doesn't happen, right? That's not a normal thing. And she's, you know, she's facing away from me. So you can imagine my mind starts to race. I'm thinking like, this situation could explode. I mean, literally, in the blink of an eye, I've got to gotta figure out what to do. I don't know what to do. So as, as my mind raced, I did the only thing I could think of. I turned around of the son of the Holy Spirit, and I passed her to the godmother. <laughs> it's true. It's true. God bless that child and give her many, many, many years. You know, as we're in the new year, and happy new year, blessed new year to all of you. We think in terms, like new year's is kind of a marker, right, where we're, gonna, we're going to upgrade our life, right? And lots of people join gymnasiums and, and start diets. They want to get thinner and they want to get fitter. And a lot of people want to wake up earlier and, you know, make our life kind of an upgrade, get better. Baptism which is, we celebrated yesterday, the Lord's baptism, and all of us who were baptized, baptism is not an upgrade. Sometimes we think in, in, in terms of like, I'm getting better in my life. Now, you know, I was baptized, I'm a Christian. It's not an upgrade. It's a radical transformation. It's a total radical change. It's a brand new opportunity. So it's not like you're going out to get some kind of like new self-help material that's going to help you be a better person or a better Christian or a better whatever. It's totally, radically transformational. And listen, we get this, this idea, this understanding from the Apostle Paul himself in Romans chapter 6, which is what we read in your baptismal services. St. Paul says, do you not know, and he's talking to the Roman Christians, that all of you or all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Now you hear those words. What he's telling you is that in our baptisms, in those baptismal waters, the old dies. Do you get it? It's not cleansing. Often we say, you know, the child is washed. I mean, we use that terminology, or the adult is washed. But it's a total, total transformation. The old dies. Listen to what he says further. When all of us, or when we were baptized, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. Meaning, in our baptisms, we participate in the cross. Does that make sense? So when St. Paul tells us to be co-crucified, what does that mean? We have to go in a time machine back to Jerusalem and climb the cross? No. We share in the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in those baptismal waters. All kidding aside, that's why babies usually cry, right? Because water is to clean and we do drink it, but it can also take life. And the children recognize that. So we were buried with him in baptism into death so that as Christ was raised by the glory of the Father, listen, we too might walk in the newness of life. Do you hear those words? So Paul is saying this is totally different. And it even translates itself into the Orthodox baptismal service. So when we're baptized in the Orthodox church, there is a prayer. There are many, but one that we read that says, Wherefore, O Lord, manifest yourself in the water. Come down into the water. And grant that he or she who is baptized may be transformed. That he may put off the old man because it's corrupt. The old sinful Adam within us. And be clothed with the new man. You see it. 
even in our baptismal service, we are taking the message from Paul that it's brand spanking new. And you may say to yourself, well, but Father, that's weird because, like, I'm not actually dead, right? When, when no one who has ever been baptized was, died in the waters. I mean, we're still living. That's how we're here to hear all of it. You're right. So how do we, re- how do we bring that together? Paul's telling us that that death has to happen here. So you must also consider yourselves, reckon. Right, this word he uses in Greek is powerful. He's telling you, make your mind, force your mind to reckon and consider that you are dead to sin so that you can be alive to God. You see it. So, yes, you're all still living, and thanks be to God, even after beautiful baptisms. But you are not upgraded. Your life is not something, you know, that's getting better. It's new. It's a brand new opportunity. It's a fresh start. For many of us, it happened many years ago, and I understand that. But it is something totally, radically different. We're new. And from this moment, in baptism, until our last breath, we now must, as St. Paul said, we heard earlier in Romans, walk in the newness of life. We must live as warrior saints. And that's just the bottom line. It's that simple, right? And so baptism, in its beginning, gives us that fresh start. It is hard, however, you know, to, to, to do that, to live that life. There are a lot of things that are out there in the way that are really, I would say, infecting the mindset. One of them, you know, is the, the New Year's resolutions. And we all make them, and I know we should, and, you know, hopefully, you, you know, you stick to your New, New Year's resolutions. But the data shows us that New Year's resolutions, like 80-some percent, dissolve, vanish, are gone by 12 days, Right? So that means by Friday, your New Year's resolution is going to be shot, right? Because it's, it's a 12-day limit for most of us. The other part of the New Year's resolution is that it leads us to say things about what I'm going to do. And that leads us to what I call the ER mindset or to, to take ER words into our lives. Listen to what I mean. It's, it's better, thinner, stronger. Right, you hear those, like the ER at the end of the word. I'm going to do something so I will be better, thinner, stronger. Do you understand? This mindset is really what leads us to those failed resolutions. Instead, what I'm looking for you to do is to completely shift your identity. Maybe even redefine your identity. Does that make sense? So in other words, I am not going to do something. I am going to change how I look or think about myself. So I don't want you to make New Year's resolutions. I mean, you can, and you probably did, and you should, and all that kind of stuff. But I'd rather you make a New Year's identity shift. So instead of saying, I'm going to, you begin to say, I am. Right? Does that make sense? So like many of us want to get up earlier. And we say, I am going to wake up earlier. There's your ER word. Instead, we have to say, I'm an early riser. I'm going to be a better spouse, better husband, better wife, right? I'm going to work hard and love her and love him. No, just say, I am a good wife. I am a great husband. I'm going to work hard and and I'm going to lose weight. This is the big one, right? I mean, all of the weight loss industries, boom, in January, right? I'm going to to diet. I'm going to wake up earlier and run and do all these things so I can be thinner. How about you just say, I am a healthy person, right? Right? Look, and we know that that doesn't work because all of our resolutions fail and we all set the same resolutions the very next year to lose a few pounds, right? So clearly saying I will do didn't work. And finally, you know, this one's a big one too in today's age. I'm going to work harder so I can be more successful or make more money or whatever it is that we're after. Rather, I am one with a powerful work ethic. Do you understand? We're shifting our mindset from who I am that I'm going to into I am. And it ends like this. Rather than say, I am going to try to be a good Christian, we say, I am a warrior saint. You see that. Do you understand? It's that radical mind shift because all things are new. Everything's different. We're not what we were before our baptisms. We are totally different. Now, in the coming weeks, we're going to talk to you about how to implement this. Next week, Greg's going to talk to us about being taught The following week, I'm going to talk about how to fight. And then finally, Greg will lead us again on how we, once we are new, we have been taught, and we are fighting, we teach the next generation. So we'll see that in the coming weeks. All of that to put in our mind. In your baptisms, you are new. You are different. 
you have to consider and reckon yourselves as different. But if you are going to be different, you have to act differently. Does that make sense? So now the, the I'm going to, the ER words start to fit in the picture. I am a person who strives for health. I am going to get up early and I'm going to eat the proper foods and I'm going to plan an exercise regimen. You see how that works. Do you make, does it make sense? But I am first a healthy person. And so now I'm putting in all the actions that work. I am going to be a better, or I am a good spouse. So to do that, I am going to listen better. All right. I am going to sacrifice more. I am going to, I am going to. Does that make sense? So now that we are new, baptism has given us this completely radical newness. The old you dies in those waters. And a new you comes up and is commanded to walk in the newness of life. To do that, you must have that identity shift, that mindset shift, where you reckon yourselves to be dead to sin and you are a warrior saint. And then... It's pretty simple, but totally hard. Just connect the requisite actions that go with that newness. May our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who was baptized by John in the Jordan for our salvation, bless and keep you.